on some time. And it looks like an excellent weekend on time. We're here with Mr. Richard Arrington, who is running for mayor of the city of Birmingham. Mr. Arrington, we're going to ask you a couple questions, and here's the first one. What are some of the things that you are planning to do if you are elected mayor of the city of Birmingham? How's it going? Well, I don't know. Welcome to Arrington, Elder Mary. <laughs> My school. This oh, is I so cool. Oh, I forget you guys do it that way. No, you're good. <laughs> good, good, man. So good. tell me. Tell oh, me. Oh, good. Good. Arrington School, what year was the school built? I don't know the year, Mayor. I was living right over the two or three blocks. I was serving as mayor in the yeah. West End community. Came to the school board and got the You used to be on the school board. I did. And <laughs> got the school board to name this Arrington. That's a great honor. Oh, oh come on, let's go on in. <laughs> You know this man? Yes, sir. <laughs> we were asking, what year is the school built? Do you know? It was built in, I want to say, 80, I want to say 85. There you go. There you go. Okay. 85, it was southwest, 1985. It was Southwest Middle. 84, 85, one of those. Yeah. I know it was Southwest Middle School. So either 1984 or 1985, uh, Southwest Middle becomes Arrington Middle School, which is now Arrington Elementary School. You got to tell me, Mayor. Uh, how do you actually feel? We're gonna go here to the office. Tell us. Oh, it's after all these years, how do you feel? Like you're living Black History. So what are you I'm walking through know, these it's schools? Still, it's still a great, great honor for me. Here you're talking about an 80 man year old man who was excited and still over the idea that this was my community. Here's a school name for me. And the people in the community came to the board and wanted the board to name it. That was one of the greatest honors I received. It is. Yeah. You got a got a street named after you. Uh, you got a well, lot of things I, named after you. Well, I had you. nothing to do with that. Uh, hey, y'all. Good to see y'all. I have I I have some students occasionally now, and you know, and I teach them for about a half semester. And after a while, one of them puts their hands up and say, "You know anything about Arrington uh, Boulevard?" <laughs> And I've been telling him all the time the street was named for me. But the, but the city council did that after I had resigned. Yes, sir. Yeah. So in this school, you have ages between four and five, all the way up into 10, 11 years old. Do you ever get a chance to, or even when it was in middle school, do you ever get a chance to come and just walk the halls or read to the children or speak, anything of that nature? Yes, this is my third or fourth time here. In fact, shortly after you became mayor, I was here with the Bulldogs. We call out oh, yeah. Arrington. Arrington we call Bulldogs. Ourselves the Bulldogs. Yes, sir. I was here with the Bulldogs. Uh, in fact, you had uh, Hilliard kind of came from your staff uh, for, for a special program. So they've been kind enough to have me here for three or four programs with PTA and things of that sort. And yes, sir. That's another reason I feel special that they still remember. Absolutely. And I still know that, oh, he's still around, let's bring him here. So. I, I tend to be a student and a sponge and try to soak up all my predecessors' legacies. <clears throat> Yours comes to mind all the time. You have mentioned not once, but several times that Birmingham City Schools and the whole notion of if you could change something or whatever. Can you speak to that in 2023 as it relates to your engagement in 20 years as mayor and I guess the state of schools and education? Well, I suppose one of the things that I feel uh, that we mayors that I and, and one South of me didn't do as much as we should have and that was with schools. It was a trying time for our school system. 
we supported things like, okay, we're going to increase, try to get the tax increase for schools. Right. But uh, we didn't really get in. And, and, and what I like, Mayor, and I'm not just saying that because uh, you're here, but I, I was telling the people earlier, one of the many things I admire about your administration is what you've done with schools. Yes, sir. And I told him you only do it, but did it because you was on the board, and you understood how important it was. We didn't understand. Yes, sir. But you know, the PALS program, I, I, I'm just crazy about that. Oh yeah. Because it focuses on kids learning to read when they, from the time they're born, and parents being involved. Yes, sir. Learning how important it is that their kids can read by the time well by the time they're in third and fourth grade. And for the mayor to have a program promoting that, it calls attention to a lot of families and helps them to shape their family values. And then you got the, you know, I know you have a promise program too. Yes, sir. But, but I, I really like that uh, PALS thing because I have done research myself on how do you close the racial learning gap. In yes, sir. I've spent much of my life in a, outside of politics at historically black colleges. Yes, sir. And I know one of our challenges is to close that learning gap. We, many of our kids come in reading at 10th grade level. Right. And, and, and now if we can start closing that gap and successfully in elementary school level, at first grade, you've seen that. First hand, man. With all the other stuff you have to see. <laughs> and I, don't, I didn't see that. I was an educator, but I didn't see that that should have, I didn't give it the priority I thought it ought to have. So I got, I got two important questions. The first question is going to start more with a comment. The comment is, let's say we decrease crime down to a minimum. No crime in our city. Let's say we remove every dilapidated house. Let's say we put a home on every overgrown empty lot. Let's say there was job opportunities on top of job opportunities. In my mind, I feel that even if all that was the case, could we still attract families and keep families in our city? I think we can. It is a, a challenge. It's one of the hills we climb in our city. But I mentioned simply, I saw you re recently, you were there, I was speaking. And I had looked at what you did and what kind of votes and so forth you got in the last election. Yes, sir. And I see in the fact that you can, you draw votes across racial lines, that that's a part of closing that racial gap. Yes, sir. Uh, I think, you know, a lot of young people, young white professionals, and some of our black professors who suburban are slowly coming back in. They got to feel comfortable doing it. Uh, when we talk about uh, black history moments and uh, thing, uh, when they learn some black history, uh, they, they appreciate what we're doing. But I, I will tell you, it was, it's very, it was very difficult to get multiracial support in politics in Birmingham. Yes, sir. That's what I'm saying. But I, I think you've, you've opened the door and it, it started. Uh, I, I said uh, sometimes, I, you know, I, I wasn't very successful at that, but that what? was way back in, you know, way back in 70. So what role does Birmingham City Schools play in that? Well, attracting families, keeping families. Families who have values and understand the importance of education and reading, they want them to have good schools. They want people to have good schools. What we faced in Birmingham <coughs> was the flight of families out of the school system. We started out with a school system when I was in, first elected on the council. I might have been 50, <coughs> some thousand students in the system. Yes, sir. Uh, but as the political situation changed, the enrollment of whites in our school, or the overall enrollment, dropped almost 50 percent in white flight. Then we had, you know, we got an overwhelmingly black 
Board of Education and all of that, we have having to deal with all of those issues. Plus, we had the additional burden and toil of what had happened to our kids who have not really had the opportunities. A struggling families that had not understood how important it was for their kids to, 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 to be able to perform at certain levels. We, we carry a whole big load at one time. Birmingham has gone through that, but, but we're remaking Birmingham. Yes, you are helping to remake Birmingham. Well, I, I say that a lot of folks don't understand that. You've got to understand that. Yes, sir. You are helping to remake Birmingham. Every mayor, it doesn't matter if it's one term, four years, or as smooth as you were, five terms, 20 years. I imagine every mayor wants a legacy, or a legacy is created even if they don't want one. Um, did you want to be known for a certain legacy before you left? And since you've been gone, I guess it's a two-part question, what have you felt your legacy has been to Birmingham? When I thought about it while I was still in the middle of the, the battle as mayor, <coughs> I thought about it. <coughs> of course I wanted a legacy, but I thought more about it after I left because the whole story of my my work in, in politics and in community building really grew out of the black church, uh, out of the black ministers coming. You know, I, I always tell folks, there's two groups that changed my life. <laughs> One was the Miles College students who showed up in my office downtown after I had left Miles College to ask me to run for office and to really persuade me to run. I had never thought about running for office. Yes, sir. That, that was very important. And then after I was in office as a council member of the first, second year, for a hundred black ministers to invite me to that meeting and say, draft me and say to me I had to run. That I began to understand the institutional strength of the black church. Yes, sir. And how it brings about change. Absolutely. How it puts some starch in the Back born an old man like Aaron, I wasn't, a, I wasn't not a freedom fighter. I mean, at least folk didn't see me as a freedom fighter. I was trying to be a <clears throat> scientist and I wanted to be an educator. And I was standing there on the sideline while the young folk marched and protested. They pulled me off and said, put some starch in the old man's backbone and make him stand <laughs> up. <laughs> so we are here at Richard Arrington Jr. Elementary School. These K through fifth graders, sir, were exposed, are exposed to technology at a younger age than you and I could have ever imagined growing up, both of us. Yeah. You at 89 years of age and me at 41. Yeah. <clears throat> but they also grew up with a George Floyd, the murder yeah. of a George Floyd by, by a white officer. Um, they, they have recently grew up in real time with a Tyree Nichols. Yes. A group of officers decided to kill this man with their hands and their feet in the baton. But imagine, we know what happened to Benita Carter here. Before yeah. there was a Tyree Nichols, uh, before there was a George Floyd, <coughs> there was a Benita Carter right here in Kingston, Birmingham. Yeah. For these elementary school children, what do you say to them about everything that happened around the killing of Mark Benita Carter? It's removing, somehow you learn to say to kids or help kids to understand what our struggle has been, what our journey has been like, even at the community levels. Uh, there's Benita Carter killed by a police officer. But quite frankly, when I was on the city council, that was a Bullock's Chambers. A lot of people have forgotten a young black guy killed by a police officer in what I still think was an outright murder. It was the first time we ever had a hearing using the subpoena powers that the mayor and council had was Bullock's Chambers. But the Benita Carter thing just uh, really shook things up. And the mere fact that as a council member, I had uh, put the spotlight 
public spotlight on that news media and meetings uh, uh, led the community to, to turn to me. And even led the police chief when the incident occurred, I'm at home and he calls me and wants me to go out to Kingston with him. Uh, so why? Simply because the black community then was sort of identifying our efforts with police reform. They didn't call it that. Right. But they knew, if they knew anything else about me, you know, when I first came in, they said, oh, you know, Arrington, he's not, he's not going to do this, that, and that. But now, because the, the DJs on the radio are doing programs and letting me do a city council report and talk, now I got an identity. I go to the home, Benita Carter, all that. I mean, that to them was a hero. But it was also helping them understand what our struggle has been like step by step. And that, you know, there is hope. That we don't give up. You know, it's, it's a long journey. It's an uphill journey. I don't know quite yet how you tell that to a very young, how you tell that to elementary school kids? It's a fair question. How do you tell them how long it took to get the Emmett Till anti-lynching bill? Just got it last year. We've been trying for a hundred and so many years. But as we teach history and as they grow older, I think they begin to understand what our struggle has been like. Absolutely. So Mayor, um, we are in a very for lack of a better word, interesting time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm defining that as <clears throat> elected officials, some elected officials, not all, but elected officials across the nation are pushing uh, anti-history, anti-black history, um, wanting to make law to, to prevent uh, particularly suburban or rural um, white children from understanding and or acknowledging parts of American's history that was not always the best for African Americans, such as slavery, um, or all the things that happened after slavery that included lynching and black codes and segregation, and I can go on and on and on. <clears throat> Many people don't know this, but prior to being mayor, during mayor and post being mayor, you are an educator. Um, what is it that you want to tell this audience about the importance of teaching and, and our all people learning black history, particularly the next generation? Yeah. I agree with you that there is a, an effort underway, and I call it a political effort underway uh, to avoid teaching the truth about American history and about black history, which as we say over and over, black history is American history. Yes. The teaching truth, uh, that's a challenge. I frankly think uh, we have to rise up against it. I think it's going to fail. I look now at my age and I look at the Black History Month celebration. There is more black history celebration right now, just in Black History Month, uh, than that have been in 10 or 15 Black History Months. I see it on TV, I see it everywhere. That uh, w we have to teach that. I still have young people who I have an opportunity to teach and sometimes I think that, you know, I have to remind them of history. And, and do you know who you are? Right. Do you know the price that was paid right. to, to bring you? A, a, a lot of them still don't uh, fully understand that. So we have to teach them black history, but we have to insist that America is black history. Uh, you know, sometimes it's as simple as teaching. Yeah, I, I learned in first grade, that, but the pilgrims were here when, in 1620. Yes, sir. But later on, I learned we were here in 1619, we were the first one. You know, all that kind of thing. Yes, sir. And you started to make it exciting for, for, for kids to, to, to learn that history and to know what that, uh, that, that, that struggle has been like. Uh, to, to know what we all overcome. Yes, sir. You gotta know where we've come from. So we're in the midst of that circle. Understood. But we're gonna win that one. We're gonna win because there's a young generation of folk like you who understand it. Thank you, man. <laughs> who understand the importance of it. And, you know, I'm, I don't just praise you. I mean, I look at what you do. I, you know, I, I'll criticize you, but sometimes I look and say, this is amazing. It's, 
doing good things. Well, I appreciate you, yeah. man. I got one last lightning round question yeah. that starts with a comment first. You don't have a PhD like a lot of people have PhDs because uh, and, and an honorary. You actually have a PhD in zoology. Yes. What is it that you want to tell these young people about being exposed to learning about animals and anything of that nature? Well, you know, I, that, that, that is interesting because I was spent my early life in wanting to be a scientist and wanting to be a teacher, you know, and uh, I, I accomplished some of that. I was a, it doesn't mean most people, but I was a <coughs> National Science Foundation research fellow. Few people get to be a research fellow in the National Science Foundation. That enabled me to end up in the medical college studying radiation biology in Iowa. That took me to Harvard. That took me to uh, University of Michigan, Ann Arbor. All of that, that education. And then when the students changed my life and got me into politics, I was able to use uh, some of that. But you can be, you know, you can learn a lot. I said to kids, look, we about to go in Mars maybe. Do you know that there are 30 some black astronauts in NASA right now? Do you know that there are 16 of them have already been out in space walking? A lot of our kids don't know that. But it also says to them, I can do it too. Yes, sir. Uh, and, and you know, it's like the old Obama line. You young generation, y'all all, you know, my generation is saying, I don't know you can go that fast. Yes, you can. And your generation is saying, yes, we can. <laughs> you know? yes, and Birmingham represents something important in black history. Because all, you know, not only just folk in Birmingham, I t I've told people, people many times, <laughs> when I was in, in Europe and they fought and fought, people found that I was mayor of Birmingham, they had a great interest. They turned out in large numbers and lunch it, and say, if Birmingham can have a black for mayor, there's hope for the world. Yes, sir. That's what Birmingham meant. Hope for the world. Hope for the world. I have a, give a very high priority to people working together, to good human relations, good relations between the races. I think that's very, very important. A part of my platform is good human relations. This city will move when all of its people move, and we must move together. That's very important. Thank you, Mr. Adams. Thank you very much. The design of the building is very interesting. And what is your name? Dariah. Dariah. That's pretty. What grade is this? First grade. Oh, yeah. I appointed some architects to redesign some of this. I oftentimes say to my kids, when they, my, my own kids, when they say, well, you know you did that, I said, baby, they forget. I said, 30 days after you're out of office, they forget everything you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hello. I'm sorry to interrupt. Don't beat us up. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? You know who this young man is? Um, What's the name of school? Oh, thank you. Yeah, good. Good. Well, there certainly are people who do credit. But for me to recall the names, I mean, <coughs> at 89 years of age, <laughs> it gets me a little bit awkward. I sometimes have trouble calling my children's names. <laughs> I get it mixed up quite, quite often. Thank you so much. Thank you. Most thank you. important job right here. That's right. That's right. <laughs> More important than Mr. Roper. <laughs> Teaching the Marines. Everybody good, kindergarten? Nice to meet y'all. Thank you for coming. You're welcome.